This is DC Douglas, and you're listening to the Residents of Evil Podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Residents of Evil podcast. Today we are joined by a very special guest, actor DC Douglas. DC is the voice of the iconic Resident Evil villain, Albert Wesker, and has been part of the Resident Evil series for a long time now, appearing in titles like Resident Evil 5, Umbrella Chronicles, Dark Side Chronicles, and many more. This podcast is part two of two for our Halloween special, and we felt Wesker was the perfect guest for Halloween night. This was such a fun podcast, and I really hope you guys enjoy it. If you do enjoy this podcast, please don't forget to leave a like, drop a comment about your thoughts on the podcast, and don't forget to subscribe for more great rule podcasts. With that being said, let's start the show. send them to you because you want to just go for the uh the, yes. the, the flow <laughs> I, want, I want everybody to know that i'm legitimately answering these things nothing has been prepared i'm all you know usually i'm drunk when i do these things so <laughs> are you not now more rational response this time around, but i like being surprised <laughs> Excellent. are you drinking so that way the conversation will slowly change as we're going <laughs> i wish i were but i have to work out after this so ah I'm man good fair enough yeah yeah that works so we have a, a bunch of, uh, well, first of all, I want to say thank you for joining us. This is awesome. We've got the one and only DC, incredible, Mr. Wesker himself. Thank you. <laughs> it's already started. I, it's the voice, man. The voice is iconic. And what we have here is a series of questions. Normally, I like to put together an outline um, that follows a pattern, like how did you get into acting? How did you get the part? But I think you've been Wesker so long, you've done enough interviews, and most people probably know the answers to those questions. Yeah. <laughs> so... so <laughs> I want to do this more as a tribute to the fans' love for Wesker and for you as a as the actor, the performer, and just kind of include a bunch of their questions, and then we can jump off into conversation points as these questions come up. So, sure, whatever you want. All right, perfect. Well, let's get going here. Our first question comes from um, Valentine Films. Wants to know how do you think Wesker would react to Jake Muller? Would Wesker care at all that he had a son, or would he just see him as a mistake and to be disposed of? Um, I want to start with the fact that it's called Valentine Films and, and find out why they have not cast me in any of their projects. <laughs> first and foremost, I'm an actor looking for work, people. Right. Um, but yeah, let's see. So how? here's the thing is I'm not, you know, a lot of – there's a lot of uh, – uh, especially the younger VAs these days. They, they play the games. They're raised on the games. And, and I never played the games even when I was – and granted, I'm, I'm older than a lot of those, those guys. So I um, – you know, I came up with like Pong was like like innovative for me, um, and uh, I think I revisited video games when I was in my 30s when like a Grand Theft Auto came out, and I like tried it for a half hour, and it like made me nauseous, and I'm like, eh, this isn't fun for me. Um, in recent years, I've gone and like uh, uh, played some Steam games with uh, at other places, you know, because I don't have the setup for any of that, um, mm-hmm. and I've enjoyed some things like Stanley, the Stanley Paradox, or something like the Stanley something or other. Anyway, yeah. uh, like some really cool, like mind bending games and stuff. But I, for the most part, I'm just, you know, I spent most of my time either hustling or trying to get on vacation so I can be drinking. <laughs> um, so I, so when we get to the universe of resident evil, I only know what, what I've read that I understand as, as far as dialogue and what fans then tell me, I've learned more about the game through the fans than I ever did through doing the actual role. Um, and I know that sounds horrible, but that's kind of the nature of video games as well is they don't tell you a lot of times they don't even tell you what game you're on. Um, and when you're there, you don't even know the context of the scenes and they're, even the director's trying to figure it out as they go. Cause they're just, <laughs> You know, uh, I mean, EA is a little better. The uh, with Mass Effect, we I we I had more of an idea of what was going on because they had the actual back and forth dialogue. Resident Evil, in every game I've ever done with Resident Evil, I've never known what the other dialogue is for the other people I've been talking to. So, oh wow. So yeah, so 
So that's why it's a little bit hard for me to figure out all that stuff. Also, from what I gather, Capcom is not necessarily the most consistent with their storylines and plot lines, you know, like the the holes that should be filled and the, right. the dangling uh, plot threads that never get reattached anywhere. Um, so uh, <laughs> I could make it up and I could be right. Who knows? So in regards to, to West Coast Jake, I mean, it's uh, do I really have an understanding of, of what you could, they you guys, the fans understand West Coast way more than I probably do. But from to be honest with you, I think if you were, it depends on the kind of game you were going to do. If we were going to do a game that's a little more cinematic, then yes, there's going to be an aspect of Wesker that would care about the fact that he had a son out there. Right. And there would be, uh, because especially if, you know, if uh, as hunky as Jake is, it's like, it's that's a, <laughs> that reflects back on his ego. Again, it's like Trump, you know, <laughs> he favors Ivanka over, uh, what's her name? So, um, <laughs> if, so it'd be a, if it'd be, actually, you know, there's a lot of parallels between Trump and Wesker. It's just, yeah, um, <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Sorry, I'll, I'll back off. I'll, <laughs> well, we do remember your uh, <laughs> your Wesker's uh, inauguration. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just awesome. So, oh, cool, cool. I'm glad you like that. Yeah. yeah. The um, On the very last episode of my uh, MSM Breaking News, I threw in a little glimpse of Wesker at the very end of the episode. That's on, it's episode 10. Um, so, so, yeah, I think a part of him would care. Yeah. Okay. That would be, that's my short and long answer, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of rolls into our next question. Um, just because of the fact you think you might care a little bit and and not having so much of uh, the experience playing, you know, with the characters or seeing them in their full story. Um, personally speaking, I guess knowing Wesker a little bit since you've played him for so long, how do you imagine their first meeting would go? This comes from um, one of our fans, Ganache. Ganache. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Well, God, you see, now there's so many scenarios. It's like, where are they meeting? You know, are they meeting in a bar? Then that actually then that <laughs> changes the whole dynamic. <laughs> it turns out that Jake's trying to kill him. <laughs> well, let's go with that one. Let's go with that one. Jake is trying to kill Wesker. How does that go? <laughs> how, how would it go? Oh, well, it would be, it would probably be one of those things where he would, he would be laughing about, because he'd be wanting to he'd be testing Jake just to see how good he is. And uh, anytime Jake, you know, would fail with a miss of a hit or something like that, it would be it would be a blow to his own ego because he'd want Jake to do good. Oh, he would yeah. want Jake to kill him. But of course, at the very at the very last minute when he could kill him, it, it, there's too much selfishness involved. And you right. have to then stop Jake from doing that. So, yeah, that's <laughs> that's my serious answer for that. I prefer them in a bar drinking <laughs> hit on women together and then they end up in some strange threesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> That, Perfect. That is, that is great. That's like a, <laughs> a very strange father son duo, right? It's a there. bonding it's moment. There's <laughs> more wrong with that than, than right. I'll just say that much. <laughs> <laughs> I would expect no less. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This comes from Sahara F. Will you be doing voice work for Wesker in Not a Hero or the new Marvel vs. Capcom game or the Resident Evil 2 remake? <laughs> or anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> anywhere, really. <laughs> Uh, usually what it, what the way it goes is we're supposed to say, I cannot confirm nor deny kind of thing on, on those, the, those things. And that's when we have got, have been hired. Oh, okay. So my answer is no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, no, I mean, Actually, you got to be careful. You got to watch out for the yeah, lawyers. Yeah, yeah I'm sure there's. Yeah, right, right. But then, sadly, and I literally know if I had been hired, I'd be saying, I'm sorry, I cannot confirm or deny. That's how I would put right. it. And then everyone okay. would get excited because it's just so stupid not to say if you're in it. Yeah. Uh, but sadly, I have not been hired for anything. The last thing I've done for Wesker uh, was uh, Umbrella Core. Right. right. That was a, right. Yeah, Umbrella yeah. Core. Um, and uh, apparently there's some hidden stuff that you can get to that a lot of people haven't discovered yet. Because there's I have recorded like a whole monologue about my demise uh, being uh, over exaggerated and stuff that does huh. not. Uh, no one has come across it because otherwise, I, I, you know, I would have seen a YouTube video by now. People would have gotten nuts over it. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, yeah. Many of us skipped it. Yeah, <laughs> I, actually, I actually have it now. Now I'm gonna have to go. Uh, now I'm gonna have to like completely finish that game, like hundred percent. Yeah, that gives people a reason to actually go no, no, play no, no, it. No. Just data, just data mine it. Data mine. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not that smart. So, but I mean, someone out there is. <laughs> I'm sure we have people. <laughs> we know people. <laughs> I got a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. Right. There are though. There are those some things there. Uh, she mentioned like three different projects there. One of them, there's I guess there's the reboot for the film, which obviously they usually go for name actors and that stuff. So I, I don't stand a chance with that. Um, the uh, uh, but the other see, Revelations two. So a lot of these things, these game, they, they start and then they bring in the voice actors near near the end of production. It right. all depends. Like if I were to, uh, sometimes they're doing the mocap and recording the voices. 
And so they're there throughout the, the production. Uh, but a lot of times, like uh, I've never done the physical mocap, though I did audition for RE5 for the physical mocap. Um, and, but I had thrown out my back, so it was really bad. Um, and uh, so I just did the face mocap for that. But that's um, – so – so if you're doing the mocap and all that, then you're in the you're you would know earlier on in the production of the game. But if you're just going right. for the voice, you won't know until they're like it's that year before it comes out. So uh, six months before it comes out, even, um, and then all of a sudden I'll get a call that you know I'm coming in to do a session. I'm like, oh, it's for that. Oh, that's cool. Huh. So yeah, interesting. I guess most of the animation and like I said, motion capture gets done first, and then they can go back and be like, okay, this is the the voice work. And when you're in the booth and stuff, do you actually get to see the part of the game that you're voicing? It all depends on the game, where they are in production, and what they've decided to bring, and how nice they are. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so like uh, like complicated action scenes, sometimes like an RE five, they would have some of that rendered at least to a certain level where we could watch it, or I'd watch mocap footage of what they're doing so that I could throw in um, efforts and things like that. Okay. Um, and then other times they don't have it at all, and so we're just going up where it's just you know free record, and then they're going to put the voice in and then animate to that. Ah, oh, interesting. That's kind of what I figured. I figured it could be a little bit of a both, and there's not a whole lot of back and forth. It's just you in a booth <laughs> getting yeah, that's like, like direction. The American, yeah, like the American cartoons, we're, we're doing the voice, then they do the animation. But when it's anime, which a lot of my – because I go to a lot of anime cons, and so they tend to get the two confused, but very different beasts because anime has already been done. Right. Like Japanese voices. So then we um, we get to see everything. We're doing everything to picture. Um, but a lot of these bigger games, they're doing they're doing production and both Japanese and English simultaneously. So okay, nice, excellent. Yeah. All right, uh, Tony, you want to take the one from Cyber Rotate? <laughs> yeah, I can definitely do that one. Okay. Uh, so Cyber, uh, yeah, Cyber Rotate asks, what does Wesker himself think about Chris's new appearance in Resident Evil Seven and the Albert handgun? <laughs> I think it's more than a handgun, folks. <laughs> Zing. Um, the, uh, uh, but the, the new Chris, all I know is uh, from the end of that is that um, he looks completely different. Chris does. Yeah. Uh, the you know the other thing too is that, like people are wondering about voices and things like that. Is, is some productions you know especially with Capcom sometimes they're union sometimes they're non-union. So uh, union actors can't do non-union unless they're FICOR, which is a, a boring thing we don't want to talk about. Okay. So a lot so some actors you'll see be both in the non-union and union, and then others you'll just only see in the union, and that's why you don't see Roger Craig Smith reprising his role because I believe um, RE Seven was non-union. Okay. Um, and the reason, and RE6 was union because there were some union actors they really wanted to use, and they were they, they would not do FICOR. They would go FICOR to do it non-union. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's a whole other like boring industry talk that your fans probably don't care about. <laughs> well, we, we kind of well, we dove into that with them. We've, um, we've had we've had a couple of voice actors in yeah. the past that actually discuss the the situation about you know what what voice actors have been going through, what you guys fight for for better rights and stuff. Because a lot of people. They are actually interested. They just don't know because there's so much information out there and getting yeah. it from the source itself is like the better yeah. way, you know? Yeah. So it's great that True. you guys well, are even, so open about even, this. Even among us actors, it's, it's, it's going to be very different. Like, so for instance, and, and now that the strike is over, I can say this. I thought it was kind of silly that they planted their flag on vocal stress that to me it all was about residuals because the, the whole concept of, of, of being a performer is that we, we're sojourners. We, we, we get, go from job to job to job and our job because uh, as actors is very li you know limited like if we were a designer on it that's a whole different thing and so you work out a different kind of pay structure and if you want residuals as a designer you know whatever you are in that mm -hmm. development process you know you go to your union or unionize and you, you take care of that deal well what actors what we did once the that whole you know studio system you know when you had a studio system if i was on a stable with some studio then i had a job i was i was getting a monthly salary i was being paid all the time but they broke that system that system is over and everyone became free agents and therefore the way that uh, that, that uh, if you want like talented actors to be available for work that's what the residuals did is the residuals allowed us one is we perform it once but then it gets over played over and over and over and over and over and, and so it's as though we're it's like we're doing theater like if i were doing theater i'd get paid every night that i'm performing but i it's like i did the show once and now they took a recording of it and now they give it to people and so i only got paid once so how am i supposed to survive 
you know, do I go back to my survival gig and then right. be available for the next job? And then at the same time, I, you know, do I have then time to go do theater or take classes or to keep my tools sharp so that I can be that good actor at the next audition I go to? And it's, you know, some people who say, well, you know, if you're a good actor, you're always working. It's like, well, that's not the case. You've got, you know, if you've got, like, let's just say for the sake of argument, you've got a, th- uh, uh, You've got 10,000 actors, a thousand are really good. And there's only ever a hundred jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what our industry is. So, so that's why residuals to me was the, was the most important aspect of that entire strike situation. So, um, yeah, but the, uh, sorry, I went on a big jag there. No, no, but it's totally fine. I, you know, I, I'm, uh, uh you know, I'm glad the union got what it did get. Um, it, you know, obviously no one is ever happy. You know, if, if everyone walks away from a deal unhappy, you know, it's a good deal. So I, I think that's kind of maybe what happened here. Maybe not. I'm not I'm not well versed on it because I'm also one of those actors that is five core. So I, I really don't ha- get to have a say in that. And uh, I know that's probably if there is a, if there are some. Uh, union actors listening that uh, are not FICOR, they're probably, you know, they're going to hate me for this. And I'm sorry, but that's, I, I, you know, life is short and I came to LA to act uh, more than anything else. So I, I, I do what I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to, you have to pay the bills. <laughs> it's the bills. And it's also, it's also just to act. It's you, sometimes you just want to do something and like some of the rules for that particular production or thing to happen, they, they make it more difficult for that production to happen right. than they should. And then other times when they should be like more on it, like I've done some film shorts, I'm like, you know, and I did it through the union and I'm like, you, there's no follow up. There's, you know, at one of the deals, oh, I won't go to this. is like I'm getting back into the weeds again. It's like they had one deal where I essentially could pay actors minimum wage to be in my film short. And I'm like, and I go, wait, wait, you're saying if I'm only recording them for an hour for my cartoon, and if I call it this particular contract, all I have to do is pay them, you know, $8 or $15, I guess, in next year. No, oh, wow. Um, I mean, that's like, you know, I was going to offer them a hundred dollars at least, right? <laughs> at least, at least I had that in my budget for this. You could know, save a lot so of money. So, yeah. <laughs> that's no, crazy. I never do that. That's just so right, 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 right. Yeah. Ask them to free than give them fifteen dollars. That's just silly. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and in LA, it's like that barely will get you one really good cocktail. So yeah. Oh, it's true. The way I mean, I've been out to LA numerous times. My sister lives out in California. I always go out and visit, and I just. And seeing like how it is out there compared to everywhere else, it's just like my God! Like I can understand why it's tough out here. That's expensive. Yeah. It's expensive, <laughs> it definitely. Uh, so so we, did I answer the question, by the way? Yeah. Uh, um, well, joking, sort of. Yeah, you did. And uh, I mean, like uh, it was pretty much well, like you know, like what what does yeah. Oscar think about Chris's new appearance? In oh, Elvis but I will gone? say. Well, I think you, I think they made him look a little uglier. But anyway, uh, but I think the other <laughs> thing though, is that uh, is is that what I like is that there's a whole hint to something going on that's tied in with Umbrella Corps. Yeah. Um, and but again, it's Capcom, so you don't know. Okay, it's for that game, and that's it. Or if it is going to come back in some side game or something, and it's like fingers crossed. I just want them to go back in the timeline and do you know do a, a Wesker centric game that's more that helps like fill in all the gaps of the storyline for yeah. our Wesker. I yeah, think definitely. That would be a really fun thing to do, and I would enjoy being able to play him. Um, you know, before he got all maniacal and hammy, you know, start there and be able to show him at the different stages of his life, because that's a fun, that would be a fun acting exercise. And at that point, I can really make it fully my own, you know, interpretation of the voice because I'm no longer having to, it's not like Richard Waugh or Peter Jessup just did a game and now I'm doing the game. So I have to sort of sound similar to them. Right. Um, yeah, they would give you after, sound clips and everything. Yeah. Right. After, after this amount of time, it's like, so DC, just do your DC thing. So I'm like, yes. <laughs> and I've, done, I've done so many fan service videos since then. So I think I've done Wesker more in fan service videos and in my erotic fan fiction show. Whoops. <laughs> I don't do it in that show. Yeah, that's a lot. Sorry, that never happened. Ixnay that part. <laughs> but anyway, I feel like I've done it more in those videos than I have in the actual games. So <laughs> yeah, you definitely got a lot out there. I was I was impressed going through. I was looking up some of the extra stuff that you had done outside of the games. I was like, man, he is full in on Wesker. <laughs> he is Wesker. He's well, never, so much. You know, I never had. I've never had fans like that. I've had people like see me on a show and go, oh, that was awesome. Or have like creepy old guys send me postcards <laughs> going, will you send me a signed 8 by 10 to masturbate to? But I've never, <laughs> I've never had 
you know, like just <laughs> lots of strangers want to like be my friend on Facebook. And I'm like, who are you people until I made the connection? And I'm like, well, I mean, now that I have fans, I'm going to like make the, I want them happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as they're hanging around, I might as well make them happy. It so. is a rabid fan base. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, as rabid as it can be. I mean, I, I've seen the, uh, the photo shoots that you like drop in on and everything like that with all the RE cosplayers. You're like the big cheese, like standing right there, arms crossed and stuff, you know, and it's interesting when you see actors like take that initiative to like really connect on the basis with the fans, you know? Yeah. I want to clear that up because the way he described it, it sounds like I'm like this this a hole that like shows up and says, oh, "Let me take a picture with you." Put me in the center. And let me just stand. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I love going there to see a, the, their outfits and all of that. And because the beauty of being the fact that he's Wesker, I do get to stand in the middle. But if I were some other character, I wouldn't be standing in the middle. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, I'm yeah, I'm totally grateful for them. I also go there because then I get to like try to because when I go to conventions, I do this show that may not that's just zombie related. Uh, and, huh. um, and so I try to pitch them all to come to the, you know, to be in the audience because the bigger the audience for that right. show, the better it is. Oh and yeah! Like at DragonCon, it was great. We had, um, we had, according to uh, uh, this uh, lady, uh, Carissa, a wonderful woman who works for DragonCon, um, she said that uh, they had, we had about we were standing room only two hundred were in, and they turned away two hundred, oh, so, wow. which would have been the, the, the hugest performance I'd ever done of it. So next year, hopefully, I'll be in the ballroom. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you go to Dragon Con for projects like that and everything. Everybody's got a drink in hand and enjoying everything. You know, all my friends yeah. go to it and they're like, oh, you got to come. And I'm like, oh, hey, I let's love a party here. But it is, it is one of my favorite cons. The other one, one of my other favorite ones that I'm, I'm going to at the end of this month is called Yomacon in um, Detroit. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and that's a really fun one as well. It's it's actually it's a little bit of a Dragon Con feel because you do have to walk between a, a convention center and, and, a, and two hotels. But it's a smaller, obviously, because it's not five hotels and it's smaller just by attendance, but still large enough that you have that kind of where's the night going to take you kind of feel. So, right. Nice. Right. Yeah. Very nice. So we kind of touched on Umbrella Chronicles a little bit with your part. This person, Bob Harskins, had a little more um, one, a little more information he wanted uh, since since you voiced the announcer in Umbrella Corps, uh, which takes place after Wesker was killed, do you think that this is an indication that Wesker is alive or that a clone of Wesker could appear in a future title? Why did I not understand that? <laughs> it's, it's a long question. <laughs> Welcome to Umbrella Corps. <laughs> uh, Umbrella Corps takes place after Wesker was killed. Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing about that one. It's it's because I um. When I was there recording it, the guys who did the game didn't know anything else about it. And I did this one monologue, and I go, and I go, guys, does this monologue mean I'm back? And they go, we don't know. <laughs> and uh, uh, and then I read an article that someone said that Umbrella Cook, uh, one of the producers said that it was that it was canon. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. if the game okay, now the game is canon, but Wesker shows up, you have to like get to a certain level where you can get me as your commander. I think. Um, or I'm in the DLC. Of, I'm, you see, this is where I'm because I don't play games. So the game may still be canon, but the use of and my availability in that game is maybe just an Easter egg for that game. Right. Okay. Ah, right. Or I am canon. I don't oh, yeah. know. But it, they all keep <laughs> saying that he's dead. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, he <laughs> I, took I a know. rocket to the face. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. <laughs> The only way I see, I see. The only way that I think that he's alive is that 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 wasn't him. That that was a clone of his, or that there uh, in the Wesker children there are several Albert Weskers, but I don't think that's the case. I think they're different kinds of Weskers. Um, right. The uh, or they decide to do a game where they go, "Hey, RE five never happened," and <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna throw that one out the window. Poor Sheva. Right. Poor Sheva. Poor Sheva. <laughs> So, yeah, so it's, uh, it's it's possible, maybe. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, it's basically I've left you back to where you were when we started. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, your senator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Tony, go for the next one there. M, M, Dead M Dead Ryu. Ryu yep. <laughs> uh, M Dead Ryu asks, "What was your inspiration for the character of Albert Wesker?" My inspiration? Yes, like uh, how like you did. I like, came up with the voice. I, I know like some of the history of this, but th oh. this person clearly doesn't. Yeah. Well, then why the hell are we giving them time? <laughs> uh, let's, let's see here. Uh, let Hannah do it quickly in case they've... Uh, 
uh, missed uh, history. Um, uh, Albert Wesker has been played by four actors, starting with Sergio Jones in 1996, I believe it was, mm-hmm. and the very first one. And he just did that one, and he was morally, more an on-camera actor and ended up doing a lot of uh, some TV and a lot of horror films, moved up to New Jersey, and then disappeared. I tried finding him, and I couldn't get a hold of him. Um, <laughs> and he didn't want to do social media, according to the last people who worked with him. Oh, wow. Um, then Richard Waugh took it over, because they moved production to Canada, so then Richard Wall's a Canadian actor. He took over the role of Wesker. His inspirations for doing so, he's really the one who sets the voice in motion. He said he liked the idea of a David Bowie-esque quality. So uh, that he's the one who said it in that, in that vein. Um, then they brought it back to L.A. for one production, and that's where Peter Jessup then popped in and uh, took over the role of Wesker. He added in this kind of more marble sound to the voice and uh, and did that. Then they went back to Canada, so Richard Waugh was back to do it, and uh, <laughs> Richard Waugh could continue doing the way that he did it. Then they uh, auditioned me for Umbrella Chronicle, and Chronicles, and they played Peter Jessup's version, and so I tried to impersonate Peter Jessup, not knowing anything about this game, and did what I could with Umbrella Chronicles. I hate my performance in it. Um, and then I find out playing poker with some friends that, oh, hey, that's like big time, dude. I'm like, what? Um, so I was very <laughs> excited. And, then, and I go, oh, that explains all the weird people on Facebook. Um, <laughs> and so then I go back and uh, they have me back for RE5. And uh, the, I go and I do that. And then in the first session, they play Richard Waugh. And, they, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, shit, I've been doing the other guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so then I try to do him to keep a little bit of uh, Peter Jessup in there. And then, I, of course, he's, I want to throw in my own interp on the dialogue, but um, I'm being directed to go a little more hammy because the director's being asked by the producers to go a little hammier with it, the same with the dialogue. And then, of course, he's evolving and mutating. And then at that point, you know, it's I'm just doing more of my thing when, once he gets into mutated, you know, chew, scenery chew, chewing mode. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then that becomes Albert Wesker. Um, I kind of have dropped the, 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 the English every now and then I throw it in a little bit just as a slight, you know, transatlantic thing. But, um, you know, he <laughs> is from, I think, Ohio originally. So it doesn't quite make sense. Yeah. That he has that. No, it goes off with this accent. And it's like, wait a minute. Why do you have that accent? I mentioned that yeah. so many times. I don't know where that accent came from, but I'm glad it got dropped. <laughs> I don't know. I enjoyed it. You know, I think I, you know, I get a little flair right there, like flair for the dramatic. I guess you want to say. I, I enjoyed it. But yeah, that's, yeah. That's me. I think it's it like, makes, yeah, it, I mean, makes a good villain. He, yeah, he's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I think it's like when he starts to get a little too yeah, self important and then throws these things. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're on your way to becoming a god. Why not like change who you are? You know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, speaking of the voice, uh, Nadia Himuro wants to know if you can say something for her. I think that she, let's see, she says she knows it's dumb, but all of Wesker's plans are kind of silly. So she would ask you to say something like Wesker-tastic or this plan is Wesker-tastico. <laughs> What's her where name? That came from. Uh, Nadia Himura. Nadia, your plan to have me say this plan is Wesker-tastic is, in my opinion, definitely Wesker-tastic. That's so awesome. Well, you just made her night. (laughs) They just made all her night. It's beautiful. (laughs) Hell yeah. That's awesome. You guys are so easy. Uh, Sadly, yeah, I am. (laughs) Sadly. (laughs) Awesome. Oh, God. Okay, uh, Levi Red Fox asks, if Wesker is in... Wait, didn't we do this? Oh, no, 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 we didn't. Okay. If Wesker is in Resident Evil 2 Remake, what type of scenario would you like to see Wesker put in? As in, what would his character be doing during this time? I would like him to be making pottery, like for his (laughs) Etsy account. I have no idea. I don't know the games that well. I mean, I don't know the stories, like all of that. Like, what do I want him doing? I would like him doing... Well, you know, I'd like him doing something where it's not like a repeat of what he's done before, you know, make, make it something a little more subtle, like some sort of long game that we don't know. It's just mysterious and creepy. And he does a little bit of it in the game, but we don't know what it is. And it won't pay off like until three games later kind of thing. That's I'd like that. But uh, but otherwise, no, I think I think making pottery for Etsy is probably the best thing he could be doing. It's very therapeutic. <laughs> I know. Um, about the time that Code Veronica came out, and I know that's before you had stepped in as Wesker, but I had a a theory or a fan story going where um, Ada, you know, at a later point in time, she find out that she's working with Wesker, that during Raccoon City, she's actually working with Wesker. And after she falls off to her doom, 
which she survives, obviously. Uh, Wesker's the one that actually picks her up and carries her away, so he'd been there the whole time behind the scenes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There it is. That, that would actually be kind of cool if they threw that in, in too, because like you don't, you don't know exactly yeah, how she survives all the crap she kind of goes through, like depending which way the games go. But I think I think that would be something. Plus, you know, it gives DC a chance to come back and you know play the character we all love and everything. Yeah. Come on, Capcom. Let's well, make it happen. That's the thing is, I I would love to come back and do the thing, but it's like you just never know. But also, it gets confusing yeah. when they jump back and forth with these different versions. You know, going back in the timeline and stuff. It's like you. Yeah. It's um, it's I kind of feel sorry for the the franchise in that way, and that it, it it gets a little kind of it becomes actually its own T virus beast of some sort. In many ways, he's actually right because I mean, ever since he's take uh, DC's taken over the role, he has gone back in time a couple of times to different time points where others have already done it, and it's very weird, you know. And I mean, game's been around for twenty years. I guess things are you know bound to change, but hmm. yeah, get some particles <laughs> on. <laughs> Right. Uh, Sean Rooney wants to know, how does it feel to be part of something that means so much to so many people? It's it's a burden, really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, well, it's truthful. Uh, well, it, no, it's pretty freaking awesome. I mean, let's, this is how grateful I am. Number one, I'm grateful because... Um, uh, I get lonely at night, so it's fun to like talk to people on the computer. <laughs> no, um, you know, what's, what's great about it is the is I mean, like again, it's like actors like everybody would like wants to have fans to a certain point, but still also have their anonymity to be able to go and do what they want. And um, obviously, this has not gotten me rich or anything. It's just a, it's just been a gig. But what it has done, something that. Uh, oh, let me let me let me let me backtrack a little. When I was a kid, and I imagined being an actor, I had a fantasy of that I would be flown from set to set and I'd go to different places. And that this that would be how I'd get to travel. Is that my acting would allow me to travel? And of course, you know, uh, DC meet reality. I'm you know you're the the white nerdy guy who's going to basically just do television most of your life and barely get any like big big budget films. Um, and when you do, they're always shooting at a back lot in L.A. Um, so it didn't really lead that. I think only um, before this last few years, before uh, the voiceover really took off for me, um, the only time I ever got to go out of town was to San Diego to do an episode of Silk Stockings. So it's like <laughs> so it was never I didn't get to have that experience. Um, then the, the voiceover stuff sort of takes off and whatnot. And then what happens is simultaneously. I have people that uh, mm-hmm. appreciate my work as Wesker that also happen to be part of an indie production thing hire me to come and do a film in their town. So we ended up doing a film in Houston, two films in Houston and a film in Philadelphia. And all of that was uh, a big part was because I had this cachet now with Resident Evil. And so I owe that that childhood fantasy of being able to travel and act to Resident Evil. I also owe to Resident Evil all of these uh conventions i mean granted yes the mass effect also has helped and plus the anime that i've done and a lot of the jrpgs that i've done you know that all helps sell it but it's the you know the first thing that gets your attention is resident evil mass effect big games we now will consider whatever else he's got going and so i have done in the last five years of doing conventions i've i've been to i've been to the, uh the Oh, Jesus, I mean, I've, I've been to like five different places in the UK. I've been to Dublin. Oh, excuse me, I've been to uh, Belfast. I may be going to other parts there next year that I can't announce yet. Um, well, I, there's another one. Oh, you guys come out on the 31st. I can announce this. I um, I'm, I just booked, uh, and next month I'm going to Dubai really? to do a convention. In Dubai, yeah. Um, like, it's like, and I, if that's what Albert Wesker led to. Uh, granted, all the other stuff, but it's, that's, and it's a gaming convention, so it's strictly Mass Effect and Resident Evil that they're really thinking about. And oh, I nice. get to, and I used to think that I, I always wondered if I would ever like take the time because when I go on vacation once a year, and that's the only time I go is once a year, um, and I go in debt to do it for the hell of it. I go somewhere tropical because I love the tropics, and if I only have one vacation a year, I want to be on the beach. I want like palm trees around me, and I want I want no one <laughs> speaking English. Um, and uh, lots, lots of drinks. That's just, I love that. And listening to the ocean at night sleeping, um, and the humidity. I love all of that stuff. Um, so I thought, well, I re- really spend one of my, you know, year end vacations going to Dubai because Dubai would be great, but then it, you're exhausted when you do a vacation like that. Whenever you go to Europe, it's exhausting. You see stuff, but you're exhausted when you come back. Um, and, uh, uh, and so when this like fell on my lap, I'm like, you know, this will be the one and only time in my life I'll get to go there and they're paying for it and I get paid to be there and I get to meet fans um, and probably kidnap and be <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> only because 
Only because I have a tendency to to probably say things I shouldn't say in America. Lord knows how that's going to play in Dubai. So, <laughs> but no. Anyway, to, no, no. And by the way, I'm sorry. That's kind of me. I don't mean to. Uh, Dubai is actually, you know, uh, probably one of the most westernized places. Uh, the UAE there in um, in the Middle East, um, and. Uh, so, I mean, they still have they do a little more with the, their immigrant situation and with women. But for the most part, they are, you know, you're pretty safe if you're, you know, a white male going going there. Um, a Westerner, I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> the uh, uh, what is he going to say about that? Oh, but so I owe Resident Evil and Albert Wesker a lot because it's made my childhood dream come true in a way that I didn't imagine it. Which, by the way, is one of those life lessons. You know, you you, right. you can imagine what it, the thing is that you want to do, but just also know that life may serve it up to you in a, in a way that you don't expect. And so you always just keep those opportunities. Follow the opportunities is, I guess, what I'm saying. Makes sense. Good yeah. way to put it. That's words to live by right there. Follow the opportunities. All right, Tony, go ahead and jump on Eileen Moreno's. Uh, I love your voice work. What made you take on the role of Wesker? Because you said, like, this was like you were unknown to it. So, I mean, like, uh, how, how, how would you go about talking about that? How did I take on the role? I'm so I'm so sorry. I it's the way it's worded. I guess more along the lines of how did you get the role of Wesker? Oh, how did I get? It? Oh, well, the, yeah. For those who don't know, it's in um, the way that it works here is that we have to get auditions, and we sometimes can hear about them and try to get our agents to get them. But usually, what it is is that uh, we all have agents or managers, and that there are production companies that then have. Um, that then have a project that they need to cast. Sometimes they hire a casting director, sometimes they do a direct, but then they put out what they call specs or a breakdown of that project and that gets sent to either their favorite agents or to all the agencies. And then the agents then pick their actors uh, who they want to audition for the roles they think they're right for. Um, and uh, these days, I just hop into my my booth that I have here in my house, and I just record and I send to my agent. I haven't been in my agency in several years, which just reminded <laughs> me that I need to go and say hi <laughs> because it's good to say hi and hi. bring them gifts. I'm still here, but the uh, but the but um, and then some projects. So that's like the general the way that it works with voiceover, um, and a lot of like with the anime stuff and um, um, and some special we call what we call special projects if they're not union. So for instance, Umbrella Chronicles was not a union gig. Um, I will go directly to the production place and audition there. And that was, uh, that was one, uh, Umbrella Chronicles that came up. I had done a lot of JRPGs for this, uh, for a cup of tea with uh, awesome ladies. I love them dearly. And they called me up and asked me to come in to read for this uh, character to voice match Peter Jessup and went in, did it. And, um, you know, then what they do is they take their auditions they, t- they bring them to the producers of that project, and, they, and the producers then listen to them all and decide on who they want. Sometimes they'll do callbacks. A lot of times they don't. Bigger games, they'll probably do callbacks. And um, boom, there it was. I, I got it. And after that point, they kept, I didn't have to audition for them again. I had auditioned once for doing the mocap part, and they, they asked me. I just bought a house, and I just lifted a bag of cement and threw my back out. And they go, come in tomorrow. <laughs> and I go, I can walk around and point a gun, but that's it. They go, oh, sure, that's fine. So I go in. And, um, and they go, okay, like the producer's like, I can't do a Japanese accent. I won't because I shouldn't. Uh, but he's basically <laughs> trying to, in really broken English, tell me that I had to do like three backflips, a rollover, and then hold the gun. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I am not doing that. <laughs> Are you even able to do that like regularly? <laughs> no, that's why they got some, okay. they got a professional like Ken Lally. <laughs> Ken Lally does the, the mocap in RE5, and he's, you know, he's right, awesome right. at it. He's, and he's, you know, it's what he, you know, that's, he's a stunt performer as well as an actor. And like, so he can do that, that stuff really well. Um, yeah, and also, uh, Ken's body then was better than mine. I didn't, I didn't start really working <laughs> on my body hard until I got cast in a movie where they said you're going to be butt naked masturbating. And I went, oh, oh, I think I'll work out hard for this. <laughs> if I need a six pack for that scene. <laughs> that, that was, that was Apocalypse Kiss, right? Oh, somebody's a fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see hopefully like, not, no, like, hopefully not uh, just in that it? scene. Yeah, no, like, you, you, oh, no, you're hopefully. in a, like, what do you mean, hopefully not? I'm like, hopefully, yes. Hopefully. Like, oh, yeah, no, I'm like, old I, I, and gray. I want to be known for that that naked mask scene. So. I mean, like, it, it, it was an interesting movie because, like, I remember hearing about it and, like, you were promoting it as well. And, you, you know, you got to work with uh, Steve Bloom. You got to work with the great uh, Tom Atkins as well. The first thing I ever saw him in years ago as a child at three years old, which I can thank my father for, I saw him in the original Lethal Weapon. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. Oh, how do you know though? though? Though Steve Bloom, I brought into the movie. They uh, they had to do a recast, and I was we were on set, and I said, 
well, you know, if he just appears on the monitor, because we shot that in Philadelphia, and I said, if he disappears on the monitor, I, you know, what if I could get you Steve Bloom? And he's like, because he was a big, you know, the director's a big fan of the VO stuff. And he's like, oh my God, that'd be amazing. And I asked Steve, and he was like, yeah. And he came over to my house, and I just set up my camera, videotaped him, and then sent it over to them, and they put all the effects on it, and boom, he was in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve is awesome. Nice. And Steve will probably tell you this too. It's like he he came over and he was a little little like a little nervous. And I'm like, why are you? You're Steve Bloom. Don't you understand? <laughs> and he's like, no, don't you understand? He goes, I'm not an on camera actor. I don't memorize lines. And I'm like, oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. Like it hadn't occurred to me because I started it on camera and I and I still do on camera. So like the the back and forth between the two doesn't. Like I don't, I forget that there's there are those technical differences. <laughs> yeah. Oh, people aren't as comfortable. So the question, what was the question about that? Was um, um what made you take on the role of Wesker? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to masturbate. No, that does not connect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you went from uh, <laughs> you were talking about the motion capture and, and uh, auditioning for different parts. Oh, right, 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 right. So, well, so the, the answer was is because of Cup of Tea getting me the audition. So that was that was Cup of cool, Tea. That was a cool thing. And then they like you know every now and then I get a little worried that they might replace me as the voice. And when I came back from Umbrella Chronicles and I came in there and I go, hey guys, thanks for having me. And they go, you are the voice of Wesker. He's like, no, where Capcom likes you, don't worry. Yeah. I'm like, yes, thank God. <laughs> Well, yeah, after so long of them telling you to voice match, you know, um, uh, Peter and, and, and um, Richard. Yeah, Richard. And now it's like, okay, if you you are the voice now, so you don't have to voice yeah, like, match like, like, like you. Are. Ne- like the next game, they're going to go, okay, so you got to voice match yourself, DC. Here's how you sound in the last game. Yeah. yeah, this is what you sound like last time. Can you just do that again? It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, I can do that. Maybe. It's like a regular job. I get it. <laughs> awesome. All right, um, AJ, you want to take the one from uh, Rich Cardenas. All right, Rich wants to know, since Wesker is dead, if the developers offered you a chance to do another character's voice in the series, who would you want to be? I'd want to be a character that you have not heard before because I, I really, I'm um, as much as I like work, I don't like taking over the role of from another voice. I'd rather, unless that person just doesn't want to do the role ever again, then I don't mind because then also you can kind of really change it up. And then the fans, it's like, you know, the fans can get angry and say, hey, man, he just doesn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> like, for instance, I, I did uh, the very first video game I ever did was uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And the actor who played the role of the master, uh, like, lived out in some farm in, like, Idaho or something like that. And he did not want to fly back to do, like, a like a video game. No one gave a, a poop <laughs> about video. I don't, can I swear on this thing? Oh, way? God, yeah. Oh, yeah, go for it. Go <laughs> oh, for thank it. God. Um, but he, didn't, he didn't give a shit about it. So he's like, because then no one no one cared about video games. It just it paid, like, this, like, this, I mean, it paid all right. It paid you, like, a, 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 a SAG scale and all that. And I went into this tiny little studio, and they go, here's his voice, sort of match it. And I'm like, okay, but I'm still going to do it. And by the way, he sounds very similar to Wesker in a lot of ways. Um, and, I, oh. and so I do, um, it's, it's like, well, 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 you know, that kind of voice. Um, and um, so uh, that was the first game when my point was about this. Oh, like in that case, I didn't <laughs> mind do, taking over the voice. But knowing like, um, like how Richard felt when I took over the voice, knowing how the fans felt, all of that stuff. I, had a, I would not want to go through that again. So I like create, being able to create a voice from the beginning. I like that, like, for instance, the other biggest game that I've ever done is, uh, is a Mass Effect series and uh, doing the voice of Legion in 2 and 3. And that's my voice. You know, and granted, it's not, there's nothing really unique about it. It's a very, you know, it's, it's as DC as you can get in the morning <laughs> with no phlegm. And, uh, but it's my voice. And, like, if they ever... So, for instance, uh, 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 conversely... I've been doing a chase, uh, Transformers Rescue Bot says chase the police bot. Um, you know, kids cartoon, but fun for adults right, as well. Right. Absolutely loved working on that show. We did four seasons of it, um, spread over five years. We all are still friends. We all still have a group, uh, a chat that we have on our phones, and we all chime in. We just actually got <laughs> together on on uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday night. We just got together. If you check my Instagram or Twitter, you'll see a video of us um, just hanging out to check in with each other because we really all got along. But sadly. The uh, um, Hasbro, you know, had to make uh, some uh, cost adjustments and, you know, they're a huge company. And so uh, the spinoff show that has our characters in it is being re- is gone non-union. And so they're only using non-union voices out of New York for it. Um, uh-huh. And they're doing and they move the animation to like Ireland and like a lot of the, the shots are being called from Ireland now for that show. Oh, wow. And it's now a 10 minute, a 10 minute thing um, or 11 minute uh, episodes. And uh 
Um, and so someone's voice matching me, you know, now I, <laughs> I've been on both sides of this. So I'm like, you know, what? good for them. They're getting work, you know, hopefully they're paying them well enough, you know, so good for them. And also, what do you sound like? Cause I, I don't think I'm, uh, my, my chase, I don't think is that difficult to, to voice match, but I'd be curious to hear what he sounds like anyway. Um, right. And, somebody's doing your voice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but at the same time, that's my character, you know, it was, uh, yeah. I was the first to do it. So I've got a big ownership thing about it. Um, and so, I'm, so it's a, so it's bittersweet. So, but I totally dig why the other guy's got to do it too. I'm actually still shocked from the Buffy thing. I did not know you were in the Buffy <laughs> game. I thought that was the original master. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. AJ, are you gonna go? Yeah. Are you on eBay right now trying to find that game? I already have that game. <laughs> oh, then there you go. Oh, wow. There you go. Oh, look at that. It's some amazing <laughs> graphics in that one. <laughs> uh, the PS2 era, as great as it was, did have no, some games. No, that was Xbox. Xbox. Oh, it was Xbox. I thought it was the Xbox no. game. That was uh, an Xbox huh. game in 2002, 2001? Yep. Oh, wow. All right, same, same era. <laughs> PS2, Xbox, same hype area. Yeah. All right, uh, I do like um, how there's that level of professionalism that we're, we're, we're picking up as a trend with all the actors. You know, some. I mean, obviously, it's, it's personal to lose a character that you've been doing for a long time that you care about. But at the same time, you respect that this is going to somebody else who still needs to work. Um, you understand it's a business and yeah, it stings, but at the same time, you're going to have to look at it from the outside. Like, okay, they, they, they're going to do what they have to do. What's best for their business. This person needs to work. So good opportunity for them. You know, yeah, yeah. hopefully it comes back around. So, well, exactly, exactly. I never, I never fault the, you know, there's, it's so rare in this business to find actors that are trying to undermine each other, the, uh, at least at the levels that I'm at. The, and especially in the voiceover world, everybody is very supportive. There's many stories of actors getting an audition. Like, you know, I'm, we're just, for what we're talking about here is like my, ch you know, Chase and Transformers Rescue Bots kids show. It's kind of, it's not, it's not a big deal unless you're, as it is for fans and actors when we're talking about huge, like the Joker or, you know, any right, of these, right. you know, Marvel or DC things. Um, and, um, I, and so actors that I know will get an audition and they know that their friend does that voice and the, and, and sometimes they're re-auditioning because they don't want to pay the fee that that actor has been charging and they want to yeah. like lowball and go with somebody else. So they open up the auditions to kind of squeeze the negotiation process and things like that. Right. That's what, so when that stuff happens, that's like. That's the money cruncher producers that are making things icky between actors. But then a lot of times, um, um, especially a lot of the, uh, the more successful actors will ask the, uh, the, the original person to go, are you cool with this or not? What's going on? And they'll go, oh, we're in negotiations. Yeah. And the actor goes, I'm walking out. And then they'll walk out of the audition. You know, or, they'll, yeah. or they find out and they go, oh, yeah, uh, it's, um, they just said they wanted to move in a different direction with the voice. And they'll be like, well, then do you mind if I audition? He's like, go for it. Because we're all happy when other people are working. You know, and if yeah. everybody's happy and working, it's a beautiful thing. And it's so hard for that to be happening anyway. As I said, 10,000 actors, 1,000 good ones, 100 jobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. This one comes from Connor Corbett. He says, does it worry you that the voice actors that have been consistent, this is along the same. It's funny how the conversation flows. It's exactly what we're talking yeah. about. Um, does it worry you that the voice actors that have been consistent for the Resident Evil games are being replaced in the recent Resident Evil games. And what are your thoughts on that? Hey, what are they trying to say to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's come up. And this is, you know, what we were just talking about. The fan base is very loyal to the actors. I agree. That bring the, no, uh, even I agree, yeah. You, yeah. You felt yeah, yeah. it when you took over Wesker. There was a oh, lot of backlash, but boy, people grew yes. to love you. So. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I felt like that's why part of it. That's part of why I did those fan things. Is like I kind of owe it to them. Um, I, I'm right. going to answer that question, but uh, as, an, as an ending thing to that other thing, uh, uh, which is in this, all in the same subject, is that I reached out to um, Richard Waugh and uh, Peter Joseph. We have the same agent, and so I've, I see him occasionally and stuff like that. And I said, hey, would you guys like to do a panel together as Wesker, have all the Weskers together, see if we can pitch <laughs> it as a panel for conventions? And they love the idea. I could, and that's where I tried to look for Sergio Jones. I just could not find him. Um, but I put together a video to promote the panel, and I put it out there. And unfortunately, we just couldn't get any takers. I think part of the problem was it's like, a lot of the smaller cons that would want to do that can't afford it because that's three, you know, right. three actors that are that have a fee that's probably too much together for them. And we all, right, right. we all said like, well, here's the minimum of what we could do. It's just to make the package amenable to them, uh, and it's still, you know, it just was hard to. 
And plus, I can only promote it so much on my own. It's like the fans have to, at one point, kind of demand it. Uh, but if you go to my, for those who are listening, if, you, if you'd like to see that panel, um, go to uh, uh, dcdouglas.com and um, where would you go? Oh, go over to uh, under the contact. There's a booking booking page for my cons. Scroll down. You'll find the video for it. You can just copy the link of that video. Send it to your favorite con and say, hey, we'd love to book these three actors. Um and have them do this panel. But anyway, I, so like I reached out to Richard, we were like on email, we had this like fun exchange and then we started, we're friends on Facebook. So this fun exchange is there. And then he and Adrian, and uh, I can always never say his last name, Adrian Ho, Adrian Hoff, Adrian Ho, Hoof. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, you guys know who he is. Um, anyway, he and uh, Richard Waugh happened to be doing a commercial, uh, on camera commercial being shot in LA. They reached out to me, said, let's go for a drink. And so we all met at a bar on Sunset Boulevard one night and just started uh and then finally, here we are in person together and be able to talk out the whole Wesker, like what had actually happened and all of that, you know, and then it finally all made sense to all of us. And it was a very cool. And then we started talking acting stories and, you know, Richard Waugh is a really, you know, he's an accomplished Canadian actor. I wish I had his career. Um, and, uh, but, but just such a lovely, uh, such a lovely man. Um, and of course, Peter Jessup is awesome. I've known him for years. So it would have been, it would have been a neat thing or will be a neat thing if everyone, if somebody goes for it one day. Um, but the closest we got is Peter Jessup and I were at Dragon Con together once. Um, and uh, uh, anyway, yeah. Okay, so to that question. We need to push that. <laughs> we need to push yeah, the three Wesker's panel. <laughs> so but to that question, does it worry me? Well, you know, again, there's also sometimes they replace the voice because you've got different directors for different games, right? Not always the same director. And they have in their mind, they go, I've always felt that, you know, I'm just pulling a name out of my butt. And it feels good. No. Um, so I plug it like Claire. Let's say, Claire, I've, you know, I always thought Claire should sound like a little schoolyard girl. When someone else goes, no, I've always thought that Claire should sound kind of husky and deep and blah. You know, so they have this artistic vision that they want. And so that they recast. They're not too worried about the fans because they go, the fans love the franchise more than they'll love this change of, of actor. Um, but it's still, uh, it's still, they, they think, and for the most part, yeah. Um, and, but it sucks for the actor, and it sucks for the fans of that actor and of that role. Um, uh, so, but, the, but I think the implication of the question is, does it worry me? Meaning, do am I next? I could very well be next, and one day I will be next. If they continue with Wesker, at one point I'm going to sound like I'm seventy, <laughs> and unless they're going to age Wesker, <laughs> they're not. They're going to replace me. So. <laughs> Well, let's hope not. Let's, first of all, let's hope we get Wesker back in his own like full capacity. Well, think about it this way: think about like what's his name? You know, one of the and one of the, the, the ways that they move that this happens, um, and this is probably even more uh, of a probability, is you know the, uh, the game is popular, they decide to pump money into it or what have you, and then they decide to switch out and put in a celebrity, and that's that's your what's his name yeah. Snake being replaced with Keeper Sutherland. Yeah, um, Hater, uh, yeah, uh, Keeper. Yeah. yeah, which is like. I mean, that was kind of mind blowing to me that that happened. Uh, well, the, yeah. the story uh, starting to interrupt. The story behind that was for a long time, Hideo Kojima had actually thought that it was time to replace David Hayter as Snake. He'd been trying to do it since Metal Gear Solid Three, but it never it never clicked with a lot of people. And I guess David fought for uh, you know to keep that because he because he loves that role. It's like it's like how much how you love Wesker. You know, David really loves right Snake exactly and everything. So that finally, with everything that went, they wanted to go with an actor who was uh, you know like Kiefer Sullivan and stuff. Who he actually for me being a longtime fan of the Metal Gear franchise. I believe he did the character justice. It's just sad of, you know, how he kind of got the role and how things kind of went, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it, there's no way to look at it, but it's, in, in that scenario, there's no way it's going to be a happy oh, yeah. thing. Unless, I'll, you know, David David said, you know, I'm tired of doing this role. <laughs> then it's like, well, cool, <laughs> okay. Um, but I can also see why they did it the way they do. You know, when they go with a celebrity, it's like, yeah, people are going to be hating on us, but it's a celebrity. And, and whoever we lose because of this casting choice, we gain with the cachet that the celebrity right. has. So, and they'll bring yeah. in, they'll bring in extra true. fans. So, yeah. Right. Extra fan base. This next one's kind of a funny one. Um, it puts you in the shoes of Wesker back in the early stars days. And I guess you would have to slip into his mindset if you could. Uh, <laughs> they want to know, this is, this is from Claire Connolly wants to know, do you miss any of the stars members? such as Forrest, Joseph, or Brad. Do you have any fond memories on the Forrest? Like, did Brad make the best coffee? Did Rebecca save you any donuts? Anything like that? It's a weird question. Go for it. I miss Rebecca the most. Those early mornings with the sun beaming on her lovely white skin. And she'd roll over and snore in my face. 
I love that snore, so young, so innocent, yet implying such a bad diet. <laughs> no, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying so hard not to laugh. Oh, my ribs! Uh, I, have, guy, I don't like. I said I don't play the game, so I really have no idea. Oh, no, that, <laughs> and by the way, and by the way, it's a character. I'm not really him. I don't know where Claire was going with that question, but thank you for the question. Thank well, you, the, the, the funny thing answer. about that is now th this is this is something really weird that I, even I thought was weird back in the day. But in Resident Evil Two, when you're playing as either Claire or Leon, you go into the star's office and you see like all the desks of each star's member and you go to Wesker's desk and you keep searching it. And if you search it, I believe it's 50 times you keep searching it. It gives you a film. You can develop film in the, in the police station's dark room. And when you do, it's a picture of Rebecca, of Rebecca Chambers. <laughs> yeah. Wearing her basketball, basketball uniform. uniform and short shorts. Wesker's. So I was actually like, thinking that that went that way. Cause I'm like, cause for years I'm like, why does he have that film in there? <laughs> Now we know. Everybody, now we know. <laughs> completely unrelated to Resident Evil, Capcom, uh, mm -hmm. for all legal reasons, I will say it's, this is completely unrelated, but if you like that, you should really come see my notorious erotic zombie-related fanfic show that I do at conventions. <laughs> That's all yes. I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to reference that. That uh, is definitely on the list. Uh, a friend should of mine has actually caught uh, a couple of those shows. She, she loves your work. She's brought like her little brother along with her, and I'm like, I don't know if those are ones you should bring. I mean, he... he not her little no. She did not bring her little brother because the, it's an eighteen and over thing. So, well, I mean, I think he's, uh, you know, I think he's out of high school now. I, I, I guess it was one of the panels that it wasn't the eighteen plus one. He could pass. Uh, that's what it was. But like, right, yeah, right. like she's that, seen the, the the erotic ones and stuff, and she loved them. Like everybody says that they're hilarious and like they they crack up at him and the stuff you do with it. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. Like, cause I think. Well, what's fun is it's 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 because it's it's audience participation. So they're all you know that bring up people to help me and. Uh, and then, of course, so every show is going to be a little different depending on the persons, the people that I bring up, how we read together, the mistakes that happen. Um, it's just and it's, you know, I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a started in theater. And so um, these days I don't have time to like commit to a show, especially in L.A. Most of the shows that you can do that are, you know, if they're not on the big stages, it's hard to get audience. And it's like the last thing I want to do is is, is struggle for that. <laughs> um, so when, then I go to these <laughs> conventions, I've got a built in audience. I get to I get to perform. I get to have that bug fed. Um, you know, or that disease, whatever it is, it get, that gets fed. And I have a blast <laughs> with uh, these people. And the thing is, is it's, I always have to let people know, I go, it's way more funny than it is. You're not going to feel like you need to take a shower afterwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you might want to get into a shower, but it doesn't mean you don't really need to take a shower. <laughs> take a cold shower and calm down. <laughs> No, that, that that's, that's great. Awesome. I mean, because uh, I'm up here in Boston, and I know, I know you don't do a lot of cons around here. I haven't seen. I, I think you got you came up. It's hard to get. I don't get those northeast ones very often. I did. I did a Kineticon once. That was awesome. I that really liked doing that. And that was a good uh, show, uh, erotic show as well. There, um, Kineticon. I think, and then I did one small one up in New York once. I don't remember the name of it. It was really small. It was like at a college. Uh, oh, campus okay. Thing. Um, and and that. And that was it, but I've never, you know, I don't get any of those other, I'd love to get like into Philly a lot more. I've got a lot of fans up there and friends yeah. also that I'd love to see. Um, and then in Boston as well. So yeah, I'd love to do Boston. Oh yeah. But well, Boston's got like uh Boston's got like a huge sci-fi uh, following up here. And because you're a Legion for Mass Effect, I know Mass Effect is a huge thing up here. Oh yeah. So yeah. You see, that's the thing. And I did an episode of Star Trek Enterprise. So, yeah. you know, you get it. Like, so the older, go. their their parents can come and go, Star Trek, give me a picture. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's very true. I mean, and you know, like, like DC has told us, everybody that's listening, you know, when they, when they hear this and everything, if you just go to his page and say, Hey, I think we need to book this guy. I think you want to bring him. I mean, PAX East is a video game convention. So that'd be perfect for the yeah. characters that you've done. I mean, plus, you you're Raven from Tekken, and I love that character. I'm... Oh yeah, you've got a wide range of characters you've played, not only through video games, but you know, uh, animation and TV. So there's, I mean, anything. Where's that uh, Walker? Like isn't there a Walker Stalker con up in up around the area oh, too? Those are all over. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're all over. Yeah, those, I don't know how to get, get in with the, the thing is, it's like, you know, I have, you know, we have managers and we try to get them to, they try to get us into cons, but all our managers, in order to make money, they have like, you know, hundreds of clients. So it's really hard to get that kind of 
one-on-one and stay on top of it to promote. And additionally, a lot of the conventions, they don't like getting inundated with uh, by managers or actors saying, hey, you should have me at your con. They kind of either, there's one of two things, either they want to like just go to their message boards and see what their fans are requesting or, you know, that way. Or it's the people that run the convention, they go, you know who I want to meet this year? <laughs> And then they reach out, find out who reps them, and, <laughs> yeah. and they try to book them that way. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, a big part of that falls in the fans. So, if you want, like, you know, the actors to come to your towns and beat your conventions, uh, harass your convention <laughs> nicely, nicely. But yes, that's the way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't threaten <laughs> their you. families or anything. We we don't and, need that. Right. Don't, and not just you. Threaten, you no. get like five of your friends to do it. So because otherwise it's like, oh, it, it, here's Bob again with it's an one email. person. Yeah. <laughs> Well, on the topic of uh, conventions, we got actually a question from David Tomwell. Uh, David wants to know if you would attend the Swedish Sci-Fi Con, yes, which is two times yes, a year. Yes, 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 He's yes. Like, yes. yes. <laughs> anything, that's out of the con- <laughs> anything out of the country, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I love it. I go, will you attend? Answer. What they mean is like, will you like on your own time just like fly out here and then have a drink with me? <laughs> it's like, you know, I right. could, but. Why is expensive? <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I would love to. Uh, I would love to do a, 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 a Sweden. Absolutely, the, they are so beautiful in that country. It's unbelievable. I agree. Um, yeah, I, I, agree. I, was in, I was in that country for three hours, uh, and it was like at, at, at three in the morning. In fact, I was coming. I don't. I think it was coming from Denmark, and I was, or I don't know where. I was coming from somewhere and going somewhere, and it required me getting on a train in Sweden. I had a walk. I had a walk from a. From, from, oh, I had to walk from a train station to a bus that took me to an airport. And while doing that walk, all the people that like live locally took that train were walking. And I'm like, it's it was like H.G. Wells' time machine from the '60s. The all, all the blonde people by the volcano. And I was like, I'm looking at <laughs> yeah. all these, and everybody, the men, the women, the, uh, the old, young, all all beautiful. As I wanted to make love to everybody, but it was 3 a.m. and I had to go somewhere. <laughs> I think they're all genetically uh, programmed and created inside of a lab somewhere. <laughs> yeah, <to> be perfect. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like like it's like when people ask, like, would you come to? Of course, you know, we have a, all the actors have a fee, and it's good with a range that they work with for their appearance fee or guarantee fee. So you know, what people understand is that that we do have to charge that because that's how. Otherwise, you know, we would be flying around and and getting exhausted and not making any money because we're not at home where we need to be hustling for our right. work. Um, and so right. that's, so there's, so there's a little recompense thing that happens, you know, but what we try to give back in return are lots of panels, lots of information, being good to the fans, being nice to them, signing their stuff, all of that, all of that. Um, and there's different ways that they work that out. Some are like a shopping mall kind of situation where we charge for everything because that's how they're going to make the money back to bring us there. Others, they just give us a flat fee and then we sign lots of stuff for free, which are the ones I prefer because it makes it easier for the, the, the fans. Um, but that's how it works. So when someone says, well, you come to this con, it's like, well, yeah, I'll you know we will. It's like unless we've heard it's a horrible con, we'll go anywhere. They just have to like reach out to us, and then we work out the you know the financials and and the schedule as long as the schedule works, and then then we're there. Absolutely. Now, how would you recommend them reaching out to you for something like that? For the process out there in something like Sweden, I don't know how different would it be from like here in the states, where again the fans should push it upon the convention, but it's the same. It's the same in every country. It's, it's that they listen, okay. they listen to who's coming to their convention, all the, the their customers, their fan, all the, oh, okay. the attendees. So, you know, it's all the, all the people in Sweden, you know, who go to the, that con, they, if they were on the message board saying, please bring DC from the States. You know, obviously it's more expensive when they bring somebody from a different country. So, um, it's, uh, so it's dependent on the budget that that con has, but the way that the con goes about it is like with the con in America is you just, you, you Google the, the actor you're looking for, find their official website, find their contact mm-hmm. info. Um, and from and on my particular website, I actually have a form you can fill out that immediately sends right over to my, one of my managers. This one's kind of interesting. This is something not Resident Evil related that is just career related, just a something quick talking point. Rich Mason would like to know if you could voice a Batman villain, who would it be and why? Uh, uh, oh, oh, God. You, I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta know all the Batman stuff. <laughs> I literally, like, my friends, when I was growing up, you know, they go, would you want to be Aquaman? Or would you want to be? And I'm like going, oh, whatever. I, I watch Bewitched at home, so I don't. <laughs> I was watching Mash. Man of my Be- taste. I was watching yeah. Mash and Bewitched reruns. Um, and I dream yeah. teeny. And, you know, so I've been, I was thinking about being an actor. I, so I, I skipped the whole comic. I'm really, when it comes to the nerd culture, I am a nerd in the nerd culture because I don't know anything about it. <laughs> um, so, but when you talk about like, like which one would I want to do? Um, I, uh, 
you know, I get the auditions for all these things, and I always assume I'm not going to book any of them. I, I want to do something you've not seen before, um, or something where I get to use my the really lowest ranges of my of my voice and to just be like right up on the mic and disgusting. I like those are my, the most fun <laughs> characters. You know, what I really enjoy doing is, um, uh, well, I, this isn't the voice, but the attitude. I was doing Kamashita in uh, in Persona Five. Uh, that's right. That, right, that right, character yeah. I enjoy doing, but just because he really, when you get inside his castle, he's like, it's just id all the way. And it just felt so good to do as a performance. Um, <laughs> and then the other one is voice wise is a, a little game called, um, uh, t- uh, zero time escape, zero time dilemma, zero escape. Oh okay. shoot. One of those, throw those words together and get it. And I, and I <laughs> there play, it is play, somewhere in there. I play zero in the third installment of that game. Cause there's a different zero in each game. And it's he has these monologues, these like let he's like let me tell you a story, and everything was like this the creepy slow and like you know and a lot of dialogue. Um, it was just so, and plus we had to match the Japanese files, so you know every, the the uh, the translations that they had done were they needed to word them up more and they didn't. So I'd have a short sentence for a very long time period. So they said, well, just stretch it. When you say stretch it to an actor, that means, you know, just enjoy the words. <laughs> so <laughs> that whole performance is me just like literally like an actor just kind of like reveling in himself a little too much. <laughs> but it was fun to do. And I actually enjoyed listening to it. And it's a, it is a, uh, oh, you don't, I can swear. It's a mind fuck of a game. It really is when you play it's it. It's a mind fuck of a game. There you go. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that was uh, that, that was developed, I think, for the the 3DS and the PlayStation Vita, I think, uh, or at least yeah, one of yeah. them was. Yeah, and it actually was voted like like a Vita game of the year or something. One of it was like oh, nice. runner or something. Like uh, that. Yeah. Zero Escape, Zero Time Dilemma. Yeah, yep. that was the. Game. You can see yeah. why it's a problem remembering the title. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot in there. I also just I'm looking at your page again here. I I I saw this before and I completely forgot about it. That you played Odin and Robo Recall, which is a game I absolutely love. Oh, you so, serious? The You're the first person I've met that's played the game that knows it. Dude, well, you well it's, it's VR, so not everybody has VR, right, but, but I dude, played the dude, hell out of it. I love dude, it. Dude, dude, <laughs> dude. I am every robot in that game. <laughs> I see Odin, service bots, thug bots. I'm the only the voice you're not if is the a, girl. <laughs> if a bot speaks, that is me. And then Odin is the big main bot, you know. With, with yeah, God, yeah, the main bad. That. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's a, <laughs> that game is awesome. Because all the thug bots talk like, you know, they're, they're, they're very dirty. And they're going to try to, they're going to do things to you like this. You know, they, they talk like <laughs> this, which is so, the game is so funny for a very simple plot, but it's very funny. It's a yeah. really great It is. It's that. a lot of comedy in it. The way they get upset when you attack them and stuff like that. And, yeah. And the trash talk they give to you. And Odin just, you know, this overwhelming force that just constantly trash talks you. <laughs> now, so is that... It's a lot of fun. I am so tempted. Like, I don't want to get, you know, the greater games. But I am... I've, I did VR at... Uh, I do uh, a lot of these game uh, uh, conventions up in uh, Chicago area. Um, Anime Midwest and Anime, Anime Minneapolis, things like that. And there's this group of people that come. And they always have, like, a green room. And late at night, they set up something new. And last time I was there, they had set up this VR game. And this was like 3 a.m. I really should have gone to bed, but I was, you know, was, I was having a fireball night and I walk in and I, they're like, there's like a guy just standing over the thing on like being like a doofus. And I go, Do you, hey, I go, can I be a doofus? And so they put it on me and the, the game is essentially talking about just the, it's just you're at a bar and there are these guys that are about to fight you um, and you can grab a drink. And if you drink it, you get bigger stronger and then you can break the glass and use the Liquor glass courage. against them and then you fight them nice. and it's like and i literally kept you know they told me to stay within the parameters and i forgot i kept i kept i punched the wall <laughs> once i mean it got really bad but oh the exercise <laughs> like, you were like get lost and then and it's not like the graphics were really in this one because it's like a test game it was like they weren't that extravagant or anything but yeah. then i did a zombie one where you're in like like a like a cellar or something, and so you can barely yeah. see in front of you, and they can come at you from all sides, and that <laughs> scared the shit out of me. So uh, I can imagine what what that uh, what the um, Robo Recall game is like because that is like it's, manic. Yeah, uh, it's pretty. It's a really. It's actually because it's not trying to go for realistic graphics, um, but it's it's a very really pretty environment. It's definitely a game that you're in, and you've got guns in your hips, you got guns in your back. And, you know, you're getting blast like, from all over from these droids, and, and it's you every, everywhere talking trash to them. <laughs> but as you're shooting them, um, you know, you can grab them, and you can rip off a head or rip off an arm and throw them at each other and use them as weapons, use them as shields. Hey, this is it's, it's a lot of fun. And it must be like, I mean, do you find, since you got a VR thing, do you find, do you get some cardio work out of that? 
Yeah, yeah. If you've got the space for it and you set it up, there's they're definitely active games because this one you're constantly circling and, and, and moving back and forth and, and staying active, and it registers a little bit of your walking, yeah. not much. Um, but yeah, it, it keeps you very active. See, I I think that's see that's the game I can get behind. So like, is like if I have yeah. to sit and fix my eyes, like I stare so much at screens as it is, it's like the last thing I want to yeah. do is do that with video games, you know. But to so put it on you, but moving around and because fe- you don't feel like you're watch staring at a, at a monitor, like you really feel yeah. like you were in a you in, lose track of time in there. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. And can you imagine? And I'll be dead before this is really true. But can you imagine what porno is going to be like when they finally get the VR right? Oh my God! There's already when they get it I've right seen from Japan. It's already out there when they get it right. Oh my God! Like, yeah, when they get it right. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like way too many subtleties there. I've seen some like so, videos. Yeah. I've seen some videos out there on Facebook and everything of like yeah, it's like oh like you can do like all these kind of things to a doll and everything with VR stuff. And I'm like no, that's. It's the people. Why would exactly? What are you doing, people? I'm like, this is not what video games were meant for. I mean, maybe that, maybe for something. But my God, and that's the thing. When I first heard that VR was gonna start being a thing in video games again, I was like, yep, people are gonna go porn crazy, and they're gonna start. And there is this one game. I don't. I can't remember the name. I watched the guys from Yo Video Games play it on one of their streams, and it is so wrong. And it's just, it's, it's funny. Like it's, it's not like, like. Like horrible. It but just says, you know, it's that whole Shakespeare thing. Everything comes back down to sex. And but the <laughs> thing is, is that the porn, yeah, the porn yeah. industry has always been the, the that's because all the money is there. They always push yeah. technology to the next level. So I mean, yeah. you, I mean, we, you have to credit porn for these great codecs now for video that so you can download videos so easily now. And it's because of that industry. So because, so yep. there is uh, you know, so for true. whatever the moral you know, kind of, you know problems that we might have with it or anything like that. You, you got to give them props because they. Uh, it does help in that regard. So, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Wait, you gonna, you, you, how are you going to rate this interview? Do you put like a like a? Are we going to be like an NC seventeen or? <laughs> I think they know. I think they know our content oh, by now. They, oh, they actually released like this yet? No. And they're they're going to love this. Remember this that is, video this is JJ released with all the cursing? Oh yeah, yeah. The one where JJ made it work because uh, YouTube demo- started demonetizing some of the videos. I heard about mainly this. because most of them say evil in it. <laughs> so, uh, so he made a, a little rebuttal back to them because we were opening up a Patreon, which would allow people to support what we do and actually receive something in return, not just you know donate, donate, right. subscribe. This way, you actually get a little perk back. Um, so that was kind of our intro. Hey, we're doing a Patreon. Not so much that we were taking a jab at YouTube or anything about the monetization, because that is what it is. But um, he made this video, which was we're family friendly, <laughs> yeah. and then it went to a series of like five minutes of just curse words. <laughs> Oh, and I just wanted to see if like, their algorithm pick it up or not. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm pretty sure that one got. Through. Oh yeah, uh, it literally it literally starts with Alice in Court saying, "Can I cuss on this show?" We're like, "Oh, oh hell yeah, Alice in so. Court, of course, yes." <laughs> All right, I've got uh, two questions here yes, that we have to do. These are from our Patreons. If the thing is that if they subscribe through Patreon, another perk they get is that. With all these questions we have, we've had to overpass some here and there, but their questions are guaranteed to be asked. So, I got gotcha. you. Cool. The, I answer first them, and then comes, I go eat dinner. Mm-hmm. Woo-hoo. Yes. <laughs> yes. Perfect. And that'll be the end of it. So, uh, all right. So Wait, um, this one comes. From... <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's not knock on wood. <laughs> all right. Uh, this one comes from Kendo Gunshop. He wants to know what was your favorite scene to voice as Wesker? Oh, gosh. It is so. And again, like I've said, because I've done all the fan videos and I, um, uh, I, I do him in other special, sh- you know, pa- panels on, at conventions and things. Mm-hmm. I've done so much that it outshines shines what I've actually recorded. And I barely remember what I've recorded in all the games, even the last one, Umbrella, Umbrella Corps. I mean, you know, okay, actually, no, I will say this, and no one has heard this, unless you can data mine it, like I said, is there's a little mm-hmm. paragraph, a little monologue paragraph, where I am... You, I don't even. It's like it sounds like I'm saying the the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated because the the language is very similar to that, and it's like and it's a build. I start off small and I end up build going because I am here. You know, it's like one of those kind of things. And I'm like, and then I, we finish recording, and then I'm like, guys, does this mean what I think it means? So I would, so that was by far my most favorite to voice because I thought it meant what I thought it meant. Hmm. Right. <laughs> Which we don't know. Which maybe, we still don't know. Maybe we'll see yeah. it again. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> you know, there's yeah, a, the there's another one. Strong. I do want to throw out there. Those, for, if there's anyone out there who knows how to like data mine these things and all that, there is on um, Revelations. Is it Revel- Revelations two? 
that they did the DLC with uh, with I did with Wesker and the, Alex Wesker. That's in the right. Game. Yep. Revelations two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there is they recorded it, and I don't know if it's anywhere in the game or buried, you know, locked in there, or it's just it just ended up in the cutting room floor. But we recorded a scene, Alex Wesker and myself. Oh! It's Albert and Alex oh, Wesker. Wow. It's a short scene, and we're in hell. <laughs> I didn't see that, and I played that game pretty much. It's got to be it's, it's like an, it's got to be an Easter egg scene because, like, unless you're gonna unless they had a scene that takes place in the hell. Oh, I gotta <laughs> learn data. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to re-download the game and go through the audio files. <laughs> yeah. I think it's okay. That's I said awesome. that now. I mean, the game's been out long enough. Oh, yeah. It's been out for like two, three years. Yeah, it's been almost, what, two, three years. Yeah. It's fair, fair game. <laughs> All right. And the next one comes from Alexander Young. Since you are an actor as well as a voicing actor, uh, voicing Wesker, did you consider trying to get the role of Wesker in the Resident Evil movies? Ah, well, first, just a, a little technical point is that all voice actors are actors. All on-camera actors are actors. Yes, so the only yeah. difference is to say voiceover or on-camera. Um, we've got sometimes, uh, Roger Craig, in fact, put out a great thing on Twitter the other day about a spec he saw for, you know, we get commercial copy. And some, they, a lot of times they say non-announcery, which is means they want an announcer. But um, <laughs> but there was yeah. one that said, <laughs> we said we're, looking for, uh, we're looking for real actors for this. We don't want them to sound like they're voiceover actors. And it's like, wow, F wow. you. <laughs> because <Right. laughs> it's the same freaking thing if you're doing a good job. Um, yeah. Anyway, so did I try? No, of course not. The, you know, in all those larger roles, and first off, those big budget movies, I've never had the the juice with my agents to get into the auditions for these big type movies. It's, you know, I've been lucky to have the career that I've had um, and I'm, I'll keep going at it. But it's, uh, you know, I'm no longer at that age of like, oh, look who we discovered. <laughs> Um, and yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm too, I'm just slightly charactery looking, um, uh, enough that I'm not leading man. And, uh, and especially for Albert Wesker, they wanted, you know, an, uh, you know, a name. And so he was, he's a name compared to me. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so no, I didn't, I didn't even bother. I know what I did do though. I did ask my agents to hit them up and say, you know, it'd be kind of cool if they had the voice actor of Albert Wesker in in for like some nominal role in there, like doing like a, yeah. you know, one of the officer number two or something like that. Um, that would have yeah. been a cool little thing for the fans, a shout out to the fans. And I don't even know yeah. if my agent tried. I think they sent back and they go, yeah, they don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't well, they actually all... did something interesting with uh, Ada's role in the oh, live action right. movies. Uh, they actually had the voice actor come back and redub her for the movie. Because they didn't like the actual. No, uh, she couldn't. Sh- I'm not. I'm not sure what the story is, but apparently, I don't know if it was her. No, she couldn't or really not. speak uh, English too yeah. well. Like they tried to, like I, I guess, help her, and I guess, like I think, I think also, like her thing was kind of like a last minute hire type deal, and they didn't know, so that's why they had Sally Cahill come back and oh. and re and redub the lines, which I think. Well, how lucky for Sally! That's pretty awesome for Sally. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Visual checks. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the ones that actually crosses over into the uh, you know the videos versus the games and all I mean, the, the other stuff. Who, play, who plays Ada actually looks a lot like her. It's just the voice they couldn't match it. So and Sally came in, and that was great because that was uh, right. one of the last right. times Sally got to play her, and I think that was really a like a, ni- a nice little send off. Yeah, I still think she's, the best she's still thing about money for that. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I still think the best thing about the movies was Jill. Ah, uh, Sienna Gilmore. They nailed her. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, she was great. Yeah. Okay, and the last one here is a request from Adam McLaughlin. Wants to know if you can say the Chris. <laughs> Hold line. on to your butts. <laughs> oh my God! Really? Of all the things you yeah. want, that that's oh. just a scream that you can go and play the game in here, or, or look at the YouTube video to hear. And you want to hear Wesker yeah. do something you can already hear in the game. What's this guy's name? Input here. This is Adam yep. McLaughlin. Okay, you ready? Uh, I don't. Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm going to blow it out on this end. Here we go. Here we go. And then I, okay. I'm going to freak out people in the house. But okay, here we go. <laughs> Adam! <laughs> I was going to go longer, and I thought, screw it. I'm going to have my neighbors calling me up, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> They're going to be like, he's yelling for some guy named Adam. I don't know what's going on. Like, it's like, why, why the fuck am I going to do Chris? It's like, go play the fucking game. Right oh, here. my God. <laughs> it's right there. It's like, on I'm YouTube. Right oh, that's you. so much better. something that's different, you know? <laughs> That's so much better. That's you personal know, right there. You know what? I've always <laughs> wanted. I've always wanted an Adam sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> there you oh go. Bonus God, points good. for you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any parting words uh, before I stop the recording? Um, 
uh, I'm sorry. I won't be funny. I'm going to be sincere. My parting words to everybody who is listening um, that it, that's that been a fan, um, whether it's because of Albert Wesker or because of video games in general, and even my political stuff, which I know can get on some people's nerves, but hey, it's you only live one life, so you got to speak the truth when you, when you, when you feel it. I want to thank you all for following me and supporting me and, uh, and bringing me to conventions and all of that. It is, um, it's, uh, I'd never dreamed that I'd have a career like this, but it, it is a dream that you brought me and I really appreciate it. So there you go, and I love you all. Now go to bed. (laughs) Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. That will conclude our show for today. I want to give a huge thank you to DC Douglas for coming on. What a fun podcast this was and a great way to wrap up Halloween and the Raw Oktoberfest. You can follow DC on social media. I'll leave the links down below. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of the Raw Podcast. Please don't forget to leave a like and let us know what your favorite part of the podcast was down in the comments. Also, make sure to subscribe for more great episodes of the Raw Podcast. The Residents of Evil is a Patreon-supported channel. If you would like to get a shout-out on a future episode of the podcast or unlock some other really cool perks, head over to patreon.com slash row network i'll leave the links down below all right i want to give a huge shout out to all of our supporters for the month of october starting with our sword key holders amy adams coon cannon vil kiss and cory marcoulier moving on to our armor key holders lerwin bryce ray parker tyler seth parsley and nathaniel goring next up is our shield key holders Nick Taylor, Thomas Clifton, aka Cliff Jumper 3, and RJ Mitchell. Now over to our helmet key holders or our key collectors, we have Umbrella Corporation, Kendo Gunshop, Alexander Young, Thomas Owen, and Steve Jacobson. This podcast was brought to you by our Master of Unlocking members. This is our highest tier level. These members include Chris Lampert, Doom Slayer, and Proxy One. Thank you all so much. Your contributions and support help the channel greatly. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope to see you back at the Residence of Evil.